Hey beautiful birds and bees, welcome back to my channel, we are here for another story time and today it's probably going to be one that most of my male viewers are not going to want to watch, um, but it's basically the story of Flynn's birth, and Flynn is my son, so yes, it. I will try and steer clear of all explicit details, um, but there will there will be things in here that you probably do not want to hear, so I will put warnings on the screen as and when I'm talking about those bits, so you can just mute it or plug your ears or something until we're past those bits. But yes, let's let's give it a go and uh, good luck. Let me know if you're hung in there till the end. So I'm going to start off by letting you know um, he was one month early and I didn't even know that I was pregnant for the first three months of the pregnancy. I basically, I ended up with a bad water infection, I had no clue what it was whatsoever. I went to the doctors and they were like, are you pregnant? I was like, no, no, I, I'm, I'm on the pill. And they're like, oh, okay, so um, they took um, a urine sample and they were like, there's a lot of sugar in your pee, so we're going to take a blood sample in case you have diabetes. They took a blood sample, like a week later that came back absolutely fine, so they had no idea. They gave me some antibiotics and were like, okay, if this hasn't gone away in a week, come back and I just happened to be chatting to my mother about it and she goes oh I had high amounts of um, sugar in my pee when I was pregnant with you and I'm like Haha, what so she bought me a test and uh, tried it out the next morning uh, it was positive tried out the second one that came with it it was positive and I thought I'm gonna get a digital one just to be sure because the line is very very faint so I went out and I got a digital one and it said pregnant three to four weeks and I was like Oh, shit. Well, it said it said four weeks plus or three to four weeks plus something like that. And I was like, oh my god, okay. So um, I picked up Brett from work, and I was like, so uh, um, I'm pregnant, and Brett and I had only been together for officially together for about maybe six months at the time. And he took it he took it actually quite well because he's always wanted kids, and he was approaching thirty. So it was a good time for him, but for me I was like 23 and I'd not really lived my life due to like just oppressive boyfriends and stuff like that, but like, mm, it was, uh, you know? So between us we basically decided, okay, well, you can take a pill to remove and it's just nice and simple, it's quick, you know, they've not developed much before 10 weeks, so if it's before 10 weeks we will you know, take a pill and remove, and that's my choice to do so, pro-choice, if anyone is gonna shit on that, then just get off my video now. But yeah, when I went for the scan at the clinic, they were like, you are 15 weeks pregnant, which is about three months, and I was like, what? So we of course decided to keep, and then from that moment on, we were kind of really happy about it, once we decided and it all settled in and our family were really supportive which was great like both sides of the family were supportive at about week 20 it became agony for me to lift my left leg any more than like a centimeter off the ground um it was something that they referred to as spd i can't remember what it stands for but basically when you're pregnant your hip bones they start to get flexible to make way for the baby that's going to come out and in doing so, they can sometimes come out of alignment. So one of my hip bones became higher than the other one, and it sent a pain all the way from my foot all the way up to the top of my spine whenever I tried to roll over or lift my left leg any high, any higher than like a centimeter, like I said. And that was just, oh my god, that was it was so painful. It was agony. It was so bad that I had to sleep um, downstairs near the bathroom just because if I was getting up in the night constantly, I needed a lower to the floor bed and I couldn't be going up and downstairs on my own. And then it got to our anniversary, our one year together official anniversary. It was about 6 a.m. I woke up and went to the toilet because, you know, when you're very pregnant, you need to go to the toilet. Also, quick, quick brief break. Look at this. I went to a con, very, very pregnant. I had my costume altered to fit me. I was just very proud of that. Okay, going back to the story, yes. It was 6am, I went to the toilet, and then I went and I climbed back into bed, and then I felt this kind of pop. I, that's the only way I can sort of describe it. And then I thought, oh god, if I peed myself, if I reached that stage of pregnancy where I'm just going to stop peeing myself without any control. So I went back to the toilet, and it just wouldn't stop, and I'm like... <sighs> uh-oh. So I call Brett, literally I get my phone and I ring him because he's upstairs because our bedroom's like on the top floor and I was like, 
Brett, I think my water's broke. Happy anniversary, by the way. <laughs> and he's like, what? And he comes downstairs and he's like, what? Oh, I said, I think my water's broke. He goes, right, okay, um, let's call the midwife. Um, because we've both been to like an antenatal class. Like My best friend's mum is a midwife and she came over and did an antenatal class for us and taught us you know, what we needed to do. And all that had gone out of my head in the moment. I was just like, oh God, oh God, what do I do? And Brett's like, I'll call the midwife. And he put her on the phone for me and I explained what happened. She was like, yeah, because it's because you're a month early, we're going to need you to come in. Now, our car had broken down, so I had to get a taxi. So I'm there, like, getting the biggest period pad I can, slapping that on. Because I'm still leaking, like, a hose with a big gash in it. That's disgusting, I'm sorry. Um, it was just like pee. Okay, it's just like pee. But slightly less gross, or more gross, depending. I should probably put a warning on screen for this. I'm gonna... So I slap a pad on, we get in a taxi, and we go to the hospital. It's about a 20 minute walk from us, but there's no way I can walk while I'm leaking. Um, so we get there, and they, they take the pad from me. They examine it, and they're like, yeah, you, you, your water's broke. You're going to have to stay here and stay on bed rest, because you're like a month early. They had to keep me in to monitor me, and they were like, right, we need to get you a steroid injection. Now, this injection, I'm telling you now, it was the worst injection I have ever had, and it got rid of my phobia of needles because I didn't think there could be any injection worse than this. It went, it was big, chunky needle, and it was long, and it went down directly into my thigh, and she's there going, wiggle your toes, wiggle your toes, as, she, as she's doing it, and it takes, like, a good couple of minutes, and oh, it was painful, so I was like, really hope I don't have to have another one of those, and she's like, okay, if, if he's not coming by about, in, in 12 hours, it was about 9pm by then, then you're going to have to have another one, I'm like, yay! The steroid injection, for those that don't know, is basically when you're having a premature baby, it encourages them to grow a little quicker. So the things that they are lacking, the things that develop last, it basically strengthens their lungs and such things like that. So it's, you know, I don't mind having another one because it's for the good of my baby, but at the same time, it fucking hurt. So at that point, once we'd settled, we started calling everyone to let them know. I called my other birthing partner because Brett was obviously with me and it was my best friend, Kit. And I was like, dude, you, you need to come over. I'm in labor. Get some food and come on over. And he's like, cool, I'll bring my tablet. We can watch Netflix. So we did. And when they got here, we watched the SpongeBob movie and we were singing along to Now That We're Men as the midwives came in. And it was brilliant. They were like, you couldn't tell that you were in labor. But, like, in order to get to that stage, I did have to have an epidural. Um, it got to about 11, half 11, and I get anxiety shakes. I get shakes a lot, and I was shaking so much that they couldn't register baby's heartbeat. So what they had to do was they tried to recommend me the epidural because they saw how much I was shaking and they needed to register the baby. And I was like, oh, I'm really scared. You know, I'm really scared to do it. And they're like, look, we'll bring the anaesthetist in. You can speak to him. And he was so nice. He's like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a spinal first. And the spinal is basically inject it directly. Whereas the epidural is putting a tube in your spine to constantly feed the same stuff a spinal is in regularly so you can keep topping up but a spinal will wear off he said I'll give you a spinal first and then you won't feel the tube going in at all and he was like because you've got really nice skin my skin's kind of translucent it took him like five ten minutes to do whereas usually it can take up to 40 minutes which was great and then it was just almost pain-free which was amazing <laughs> At about seven, they were like, you're gonna have to start pushing now because you, you know, you're fully dilated, so time to start pushing. And I did, and I don't remember much of this stage due to the lack of oxygen from having to hold your breath while you push, and I'm asthmatic, so it was a bit of a nightmare. But the next thing I know, two hours have gone by, and they're bringing in an ultrasound machine to scan my lower half and my belly to see what was going on. And they didn't tell me this until afterwards because they didn't want me to panic, but he had the cord around his neck. And he'd obviously, I'd been pushing for two hours and he hadn't got past this one bit, so they said, we're going to have to take you to theatre. We're going to use, um, I think they're called triceps or something like that. It's kind of like big pinchy kitchen tool things but medical style um they're gonna basically try and help him come out 
So they took me through to theatre, Brett came with me, Kit had to stay behind because there was only one person with me and they had a go at doing that, had a go at tugging him out and they said we're going to give it two tries, if we can't get him out on the second try we're going to have to give you a c-section and I did not want to be cut open but at this point I was like just get this baby out of me. So they gave it two and they said we're going to try one more, so this is the third one, they were like we're going to try one more because we, c we know we can get him out on that. They got him out, and I was so relieved to wash over me. I was looking at Brett, and Brett's got, like, his eyes are sort of tearing up, but he looks really worried, but I'm just that rush of, oh my god, it's finally over, so I'm not paying that much attention. But Brett's basically going... Afterwards, he told me that he'd not heard Flynn cry yet, and he could hear what the doctors were saying. I was, like, on a euphoric, it's finally over moment, so I wasn't hearing them. But they were saying, oh, he's not breathing yet, so he couldn't relax and be happy or let himself cry until he'd heard Flynn cry and then as soon as they heard him cry the wash of relief over his face was amazing. They brought him over to me to hold him. I got to hold him for about two, three seconds before they had to rush him off to ICU which is intensive care to make sure that he was okay because obviously he's a premature baby and then we went back to my room after they'd stitched me up and everything. When I was back in my room, they said to Brett and Kit, would you like to go see him? Because I was still bedridden at the moment and I couldn't go see him, which was awful. But, you know, I was like, yeah, you two, you two go, because they wanted to make sure that I was okay with it, since, you know, I was the one that just went through all that. And they were like, yeah, yeah, you, you go. Um, and I was like, take some pictures and a bit of video and bring it back and show me. So they went off to do that. And while they did that, I had a midwife on each boob collecting... Um, the <laughs> collecting the breast milk when you first start to get breast milk it's yellow and this stuff is highly concentrated because it's needed with antioxidants oxygen so i don't know what it's called basically all the really good stuff that helps um strengthen a baby's immune system and they were like you have so much we have never seen anyone have produced this much and they're there with syringes trying to get like little mouths and they're filling up cups and they're talking to other nurses and other nurses are coming in to check and I'm just there with my boobs out with a nurse on each boob when Brett and Kit come walking back in. They'd also gone up to like a ridiculous cup like I had B cups and then they or like C cups or something and then they went up to like E, F like off the charts rock solid and painful but you know it was I felt like Dolly Parton it was great I could tense and there'd be like little fountains I'm sorry that's gross again isn't it? But yeah, that's pretty much it. He was completely fine. He wasn't even jaundiced, and they put that down to the amount of um, milk that I produced and the qual quantity of it, and they said that due to that, it probably helped him be stop being jaundiced. That's when babies go yellow because they've been squished for so long in the tube to exit, basically. There was a lot of after pain, like it hurt to sit down and stuff, but my leg had completely healed, like straight after labour. Um, I was fine to move my leg again, which was such a relief. I was worried I was going to have to live with that for the rest of my life because it was so painful. And Flynn is absolutely fine now, you know? He weighed 5'8", and that was the same as some of my friends that have given birth full term, so who knows? But either way, he's completely fine and healthy, as you guys know, and he's well-loved and completely adorable. Yeah, so that's basically it. This probably was a weird video getting into Bande Dabi while I talk about um, pregnancy and labour. But oh well, it's more interesting to watch than just watching me sitting there chatting shit. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and a comment. And I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.